I'd like to call to order the organizational meeting and we'll rise and say the pledge together. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have oath of office. And at this time, I'd like to welcome our newest board member, Mr. Jeff Ward. I'm so glad to have you on the board and to welcome back Ms. Rugula Dai. So we're Thank very you. happy that you're both joining us again. One of you again or one of you. Raise your right hand. Just repeat after me, sir. I, Jeff Ward, solemnly swear. I, Jeff Ward, solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And I will faithfully and impartially discharge my duties. And I will faithfully and impartial, impartially discharge my duties as member of the Board of Education of the Mount Vernon City School District as a member of the Board of Education for the Mount Vernon City School District. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. And in accordance with the laws now in effect. And in accordance with the laws now in effect. Hereafter to be enacted during my continuance in said office. One more time. Here and after, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry about the mask. Here and after to be enacted. Here and after, here, here after to be enacted. During my <clears throat> continuance in said office during my continuance in said office and until my successor is elected and qualified. Until my successor, until my successor is elected and qualified. Say I do. I do. Congratulations. Thank you. Sign that form. Now for me, you might have to go a little slower. <laughs> Shorter pieces. I'm Mary Rigola Dye. I, Mary Rigola Dye. Solemnly swear. Solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And the Constitution of the State of Ohio. And that I will faithfully and impartially. And I will faithfully and impartially discharge my duties. Discharge my duties as a member of the Board of Education. As a member of the Board of Education of the Mount Vernon City School District. Of the Mount Vernon City School District the best of my ability to the best of my ability and in accordance with the laws now in effect in accordance with the laws now in effect and here and after to be enacted and here and after to be enacted during my continuance in said office during my continuance in said office and until my successor is elected and qualified and until my successor is elected and qualified congratulations thank you thank you And welcome to both of you. Thank you. And um, I will open the floor for roll call. Oh, roll call. Yes, absolutely. I'm thinking we're all here. So. <laughs> Would you call the roll, please? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Workman. Yes. Mr. Ward. Yes. Ms. Regola Dodd. Yes. Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Dr. Bennett. Yes, thank you. Um, election of the board uh, president. I'll open the floor um, for nominations for president. I would nominate Dr. Mar Marguerite Bennett, please. I second that. No other nominations. Um, would you call the roll, please? Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Mr. Ward. Yes. Mr. Workman. Yes. Ms. Regola Dye. Yes. Dr. Bennett. I'll abstain. And motion carried, thank you. Thank you. And I'll open the floor for nomination for vice president. I nominate Jody Getzman. I'll second. And um, would you call the roll, please? I wrote that down wrong. Give me a second. <laughs> Ms. Regola Dye? Yes. Mr. Workman? Yes. Mr. Ward? Yes. Mrs. Getzman? Abstain. Dr. Bennett? Yes, and motion carried. Um, congratulations. Thank you. 
And we have committee appointments. Um, and I assume that everyone was okay with what was listed. All right. Um, and then, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble keeping up with this. So um, if there are no changes, then we'll approve the motion. I would entertain a motion. To so moved. Thank you, Mr. Workman. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Um, Mr. Ward, I have to get used to saying that. <laughs> <laughs> and would you call the roll, please? Mr. Workman. Yes. Mr. Ward. Yes. Ms. Regola Dye. Yes. Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Dr. Bennett. Yes. Motion carry. Thank you. And uh, attachment two, motion to approve uh, the resolutions. And as you know, there are quite a few of those. Um, so I would entertain a motion to approve all of the resolutions. I make a motion to approve resolutions as presented. Thank you, Mrs. Getzman. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Thank you, Ms. Regola Dye. Were there any questions on any of those? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? <clears throat> Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Ms. Regola Dye. Yes. Mr. Workman. Yes. Mr. Ward. Yes. Dr. Bennett. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And we have appointment of legislative and student achievement liaisons um, and OSBA delegate. We don't have a delegate listed. Uh, we're going to vote on all of those together. Do we have any <coughs> one who would be willing to do that? Volunteer. I'll be happy to continue the legislative liaison. Okay. And I'm willing to do the student achievement unless someone else would like to. I'm happy to give that up. Okay. And what about OSBA delegate? I hesitate to do it in case it's going to be in person again and if the pandemic is still raging, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable. Okay. Okay. You can plug me in. Okay. Mr. Wish. Ward is willing to do it. I, I can do alternate. And you'll be willing to do mm -hmm. alternate. Thank you, Mrs. Thank Gatsman. You. Okay. And then I would entertain a motion to approve those appointments as we just discussed. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Rugo Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Workman. And if you'll call the roll, please. <clears throat> Ms. Rugo Yes. Mr. Workman? Yes. Mr. Ward? Yes. Mrs. Getzman? Yes. Dr. Bennett? Yes. Well, I guess I can vote for student. <laughs> um, I'll say yes. Um, and motion passes. Thank you. Makes it awkward if we um, three of us don't vote. We don't have we don't have a quorum. Yeah. We should have probably split those up. Okay. And I would entertain a motion to uh, adjourn the organizational meeting. Um, so and I'll do I have it. a second? Thank you, Mr. Ward. And if you'll Call the roll, please. Ms. Regola Dye? Yes. Mr. Ward? Yes. Mr. Workman? Yes. Mrs. Getzman? Yes. Dr. Bennett? Yes. Um, we are adjourned. Signy die, which means we will immediately um, stay where we are and go into our regular meeting for this evening. And if you will, again, call the roll, please. Mr. Workman? Yes. Mr. Ward? Here. Ms. Regola Dye? Yes. Mrs. Getzman? Yes. Dr. Bennett? Uh, yes, thank you. And I would entertain a motion to um, approve the minutes of our last uh, two meetings, a regular meeting December 13th and a special meeting December 17th. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Regola Dye. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Workman. And were there any corrections? Point of clarification. Yes. Should since I wasn't on the board at that time. Same. Thank you. And if you'll call the roll, please. Mr. Regola Dye. Yes. Mr. Workman. Yes. Mr. Ward. Abstain. Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Dr. Bennett. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And I will turn over to our uh, superintendent for commendations and communications. Thank you, Dr. Bennett, and uh, welcome aboard, Mr. Ward. We're glad to have you with us. Um, you've joined us in uh, January, first month of the year. It is typically the Ohio School Boards Association recognition and celebrating school board members. And so uh, it's my pleasure tonight to, uh, to just hand each of you a certificate and um, to each of you for appreciation for your service uh, to Mount Vernon City Schools. Um, it's been a bit more of a challenging year this year, and uh, I certainly appreciate uh, your wisdom and your support and um, 
again, I think our community thanks you as well. So uh, I'm going to present you this certificate is presented to each of you at Mount Vernon City Schools for sincere appreciation for exemplary leadership and service to public schools. School Board Recognition Month, January 2022. And you'll notice in front of you and on your certificate is a bunch of raised hands and uh, you know, certainly students uh, that we're here to serve and, and celebrate your service to them. So I'll hand those out to you at this time and you can give yourselves a little round of applause. <laughs> And I will take this opportunity to thank all the board members. Um, I haven't worked what, yet with Mr. Ward, but um, Mr. Workman, Ms. Rubilla Dye, Mrs. Getzman, um, just outstanding um, individuals. And I just appreciate your support and your faithfulness to this board and the way that you care about children. So thank you. Thank you. I will also say there was a certificate for um, our, our past uh, board member. And uh, so we're excited to be able to share that, uh, share that with him as well. So um, we're now at our uh, reports and public participation. Uh, Pleasant Street Elementary is the building of the month um, who was going to present to the board. Um, Pleasant Street, uh, several years ago, we had a board presentation about their neurosequential model for education. Uh, they were dealing with a lot of different types of behaviors and challenges and they've really kind of embraced some uh, opportunities to really kind of reach kids um, in a variety of different ways. Uh, realize that typical school day is about six and a half hours or six hours and 50 minutes with students and uh, they're, they're going after it pretty good during that time. And so during that time, they need little breaks here and there, and they really have uh, kind of taken the next steps at kind of creating these mini breaks. And so I'll share that in the form of a uh, video and uh, we'll let it play up here for you. <clears throat> that we use at Pleasant Street to enable students to regulate their emotions, relate to others, and respond meaningfully. Regulate, relate, respond. We are combining two brain bird activities. One with meds to help keep the kids in a quiet mode so they get the most out of the shaving cream sensory activity. MT NeuroDeck Brain Booster Activity Cards are intended to support self-regulation and sensory integration when used in the context of positive relationships. The four broad activity categories match the four functional domains of the brain outlined by Dr. Bruce Perry's neurosequential model so that we can select an activity that meets the developmental needs of a child, group, or class. Remember, the goal is to enable students to regulate, relate, and <laughs> Thank you. 
uh, either expend energy or um, get more energy um, so that the child can be more successful as they go back into the classroom um, in, in strategies that we might talk about in here or that they already uh, are working on once they return back to the classroom. But the idea is bring a child in here, be selective on which activities we have them do, uh, and get them, their body, and their brain ready to go back to class and um, be more focused, be more attentive, be more interactive, and basically find out how to do Resource. The class discussed 
strategies for common ground as well as growth mindset concepts. Regulate, relate, respond. Communication. 
We believe in co-regulation, that kids regulate off the adults in their lives. We think can't, not won't. We empathize when someone is flipping their lid. We believe in restoration, not punishment. We believe that relationships buffer stress and build resilience. All of us need one another, always. Resilience means we see you, we hear you, we are with you. Okay, that gives you a little idea about some of the things that are going on at Pleasant Street. And obviously, again, when you're in six hours, six and a half or seven hours a day, to develop these little periods of time for students to kind of step back, kind of uh, refocus and do some of those things. And then a lot of these are put together to address specific kinds of behaviors and resilience so they can stay after it with a growth mindset. So uh, a little bit of a play, a little similar to what we had last week, and we'll make sure we try to bring some other things to you as well, but they've been one of our buildings that has been at the forefront of that. So, um, Javi Patel is uh, the senior class president. She has a brief monthly report. It's only about a minute. Um, let's jump in. Things that are going on at the school. All winter sports are still in season. Swim has a meet on Tuesday, the 11th at Ashton. Boys basketball has a game at, on the 11th at Mary Lillian. On the 14th, um, versus at Sports, and on the 15th, um, there's one YouTube building. Girls basketball has a game on the 13th, um, versus Nations. There's a wrestling tournament on the 14th and 15th at Miami. The bowling is a match on the 11th at Hensfield. We have exams coming up this week for midterms, a week and three are books of the week of the 17th. We have a quarter week coming up, and we also got a new support puppy who is currently with Officer Armstrong. There is a new intervention specialist who see grades in your books that have been passed out. Hey, that was, uh, that was a quick report from John <laughs> there. And uh, I think we'll move forward. Okay, thank you. Um, I don't see Mrs. Nesbitt this evening. Okay. Mr. Lang, did you want to share anything? Thank you, Dr. Ben. This time I'd like to congratulate Ms. Regal on her recent election and her many years of service to the board in the thank past you. and in the future. Thank you. I'd also like to congratulate Mr. Ward for his recent election to the board Thank you. and his future service to the board. I want to say Happy New Year to all the board and all the attendance tonight. You know, a new year is here and the new year always brings something new and different. Two years ago in 2019, we learned about, or I'm sorry, 2020, we learned about COVID-19. A few short months later, you know, we were in shutdown. During that time, you know, the classified staff with who I represent, you know, the aides, bus drivers, cooks, custodians, they all became part of the front line as we started to serve the students. You know, we kept food feeding them, you know, as the shutdown went on. And then a couple months later, we got to go back. There were some new expectations whenever we went back to school. You know, um, we had to make sure, you know, that our students and staff were safe. Um, our bus drivers, they were cleaning their buses and disinfecting between rounds. You know, our custodians, you know, they clean during the day, disinfecting high traffic areas. Um, you know, you're talking your, your door handles, your handrails, you know, down the stairs and things like that. And then a more thorough cleaning at night. Yeah, so we fast forward, you know, to 2021, a new year began again, new hope. Uh, you know, we have a, a vaccine now. Hopefully, you know, we can get past this pandemic. Okay, we continued, you know, to disinfect and clean, make sure, you know, that our staff and our students are all safe. Here we are in 2022, and here another variant is still with us. The virus is resilient. But I want to make sure, you know, that the board and the community knows that our classified staff still, you know, the bus drivers are still cleaning 
in disinfecting the buses between rounds. Our custodians and all the other staff you know, continue to clean you know, the buildings during the day and the traffic areas to help everybody stay safe and well. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, please express our appreciation to classified staff. We don't tell them often enough how much we appreciate them. We couldn't be in session if it weren't for um, the monumental efforts that they have made. So we thank you so much. Um, thank you. We're to public participation, and I would like the public to know that the board welcomes community input and follows up on concerns expressed. And we do have some guidelines. Um, each participant will be required to state your name and address and to speak not more than three minutes. And furthermore, I'm requesting that you consider the tone and language uh, and to be respectful of our administrators, our teachers, our staff, and our students in whatever you say, to refrain from repeating rumors or hearsay about which you have no personal knowledge, experience, or evidence. Secondly, to use appropriate, respectful, civil language and to refrain from foul language. And thirdly, I would point out that there are more appropriate venues to express a legitimate personnel concern about an individual than in a public meeting, uh, such as making an appointment and meeting with the individual and his or her supervisor. And with those things in mind, and assuming that you will abide by them, I'd like to call on the first individual, uh, Shannon Quinn. Good afternoon, I'm Shannon Quinn, 620 West Gambier, Mount Vernon. I'm coming tonight because of the lack of communication that the parents are receiving. We've had numerous occasions where communication is lacking. We had a threat at the career center with a weapon involved and no communication came out to the parents. I understand that the career center is its own entity. But what I also understand is we have students that go back and forth between these two schools daily. And for the threat to not be notified to the parents, for us to find out via social media for the second time. The first time I found out on social media was when our school went on lockdown, actual lockdown, and Bill Cedar knew about it. We discussed this, and he apologized. He said, you're right. We should have let you guys know that it was an accident on lockdown. You shouldn't open a Snapchat from your son saying he's locked in a classroom. And here we are yet again with another actual weapon at school and no communication. I don't understand that you guys put us in this PBIS SEL. And one of the biggest things they talk about is communication and parent involvement. And yet that's still not happening. I find it appalling that I know more about what's going on in your school sometimes than what you guys know. I invite you guys to meetings, nobody shows. And I understand you had an emergency and that's why you weren't there. And I'm not complaining about that. But my problem is we have a librarian in an orchestra class with our students as a student, then performing on the stage with our student as a student. That is inappropriate. We do not have adults taking classes with students. They're, we pay tax, my tax dollars pay for that teacher. I'm not paying for an adult to then turn around and be in that class. And the same librarian is the same one bringing these disgusting, appalling books into your school. And yet it takes one person, that same person, she picks out any book she wants. And yet it takes a whole army of us to get these books removed. You talk about how you want kids having an emotional balance, but we have a book in our school right now that my 21 year old read when she was in the middle school, because we discussed this book. And it's about how to commit suicide and how many different ways to do it. How is that? correlate with your PBIS and SEL? And why aren't the parents aware of this PBIS and SEL? I didn't even know about it until my parent meeting that Bill missed. I think y'all need to do better with your communication. There's a reason, I pulled my kid out of your school. My elementary daughter, I'll pay the 280 a month and have her at St. Vincent to get a good education, then have her here. Thank you, Mr. Sam. This is 
Now we'll start off with Psalms 127, verse 3. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and a fruit of the womb is his reward. We are to look out for these children. And I know you'll say, well, our schools are good here. Our schools are good there. The next verse I'm going to read is out of Hosea 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee as thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God and will also forget thy children. So I see tonight we swear in. Was that a Bible we swore in on tonight? Okay. I noticed one of the words said tonight was in accordance to the laws now in effect. That brings up a red flag to me. So are we following God's laws or the new laws that have come into fruition in this country with all the wokeism and everything that's going on? And I watched this with the indoctrination of our kids. And you want to say it's not happening. It's happening all across America. I watched a video of a teacher that was rejected. She got one minute, her school board, a teacher that went in and tried to state the facts of the indoctrination and the stuff going on in the schools. That was in uh, Halifax, Virginia, I think it was, a teacher. We have, people have gods of their imagination nowadays. And what we're doing to these little kids, putting them through these indoctrination camps in America now. And then we have the suicide problem, the drug problem with kids, and they get a little older. They're confused. Then after they get out of high school, then we send them off to prison because of crimes they commit. And they, so the way young people act nowadays. And then all of a sudden, when they're in prison, we take them a Bible. Somebody please get them a Bible. Well, we forgot the laws of God. We're bringing these kids up. We kill them in the womb, indoctrinate them in the schools, and then they're in prison like somebody bring me a Bible. It's because the church has dropped the ball. And I've said it before. A lot of you probably believe in it. This is where it gets ridiculous anymore. You say your three minutes are up, and you sit there with a grin on your face. You don't care. You really would just soon we all go away. Well, we're not going away. And when you start losing kids out of these schools and they start homeschooling and we get the legislator to start having the money follow the children and then the children get homeschooled or private schools or Christian schools, then you'll be in a problem in these schools because you won't have the funds. My thousands of do tax dollars won't be coming if people can, if money can follow the kids. It's coming. I'll just speak briefly again about the vaccines. And when I was here before, I had a handout for you and with only three minutes. We're now up to 21,000 deaths according to the own government various reporting system and over a million adverse reactions. And I come here tonight because I have three grandchildren that were shall I say, coerced or suggestion was given to them that they should go home and ask their parents to vaccinate them. I'm really opposed to that. I don't believe the teachers have a doctor's degree in health or are a doctor of medicine, and they should not be suggesting something that our children go home and tell their parents that they would be given more freedom at school if they would just get vaccinated. I want to read a short piece of scripture for you. And I, I really believe the times we're living, we're living in the latter days. In chapter six in Revelation, verse two, I saw and behold a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. If you interpret that, which was written back in the day when the English language wasn't even around yet, Latin for crown is corona and Greek and Latin for bow, and it uses the word toxin, and toxin is a foreign substance which introduces immune response in the body, and we know back then they used poison on their darts. Uh, if this vaccine is killing this many people, I can't believe that we as a nation and we as a people can't wake up and see the truth as turned to what is really going on. 
And we know that the VAERS reporting system even states that only a small percentage of the cases that occurred get reported on VAERS. And that's just VAERS around the United States. If you add up the United Kingdom and Europe and the East EU, there's over 6,500 cases where people died from the vaccine. Thank you. I have a district update. It is a happy new year, and it's great starting to get into a new year. So this is uh, our January 10th meeting. I'm going to go ahead and present this slideshow. I did want to set the record straight on a couple of items that were brought to our attention last month. I think it's important sometimes when we hear lots of rumors and things that we uh, look into them. And there were several uh, shared with the board in December, of which we were quite frankly surprised at. And I looked into, Mrs. McGraw asked me to look into uh, one of these specifically. So to set the record straight, there was an allegation that there was a middle school incident where there was a sexual assault. Absolutely untrue. There was no sexual assault that took place at the middle school. District officials were made aware of a sexual assault allegation that took place at a private party at a person's home about a month prior. That information came into the school and kids began to talk about it at school. Once the administration at the middle school heard of this, they immediately informed law enforcement and told the kids, we shouldn't continue to talk about this. This is already being handled by someone else that happened nearly a month ago. And so just to set that record straight, there was no sexual assault at the middle school. And that's where these rumors just kind of continue. And we need to make sure we're very careful with that. The other thing that surprised me a little bit, there was some talk about SAT scores and that our students today, maybe particularly Mount Vernon City School students are dumber today than they were before. And of course, I have a great deal of pride in our teachers and what they do. Uh, in 2014, just to give you an idea, because uh, I can certainly go on to the internet and find an article about SAT scores, but since 2014, um, Mount Vernon City Schools and Ohio predominantly has been taking the ACT, and we've not even been taking the SAT scores. They also changed something in 2014, where they said that every single student in the state of Ohio must take this ACT test their junior year. It used to be prior to that, that only those who were interested in going to college would take these tests. Well, naturally, if you have every single person taking the test uh, and you put those into mean scores, uh, those certainly are going to be interpreted differently. But I did find it interesting with the SAT comments. And so I went back and we do have some students who take SAT tests in Mount Vernon City Schools. And I was really pleasantly surprised to find out that uh, the national SAT English score uh, mean is 528 in Mount Vernon, it's 590. The math scores are 523, and in Mount Vernon, they're 580. The total score for SATs across the nation is 1051, and the students in Mount Vernon who took those scores uh, are 1170. So I just don't believe that our students are dumber today. We've set standards that the uh, school, Ohio School Board sets with the state legislature, and those have changed over the years. So standards have become much more rigorous. Uh, our students are doing things today at grade levels they were not doing 20 years ago. And so I'm proud of what our teachers are doing within the school setting. We're not making our students dumber. And I didn't include this on here because I heard uh, Mrs. Quinn share this comment a little bit ago about transparency. Um, the incident she's referring to uh, was something that we became aware of on a Friday about noon from Centerburg Local Schools, who said they had a student who posed a picture on Facebook or Twitter, I don't recall what it was, TikTok. <laughs> And so Centerburg was aware of this, 
and they got law enforcement involved. The student never came to Centerburg, never came to the Career Center, is a Centerburg student uh, attending the Career Center, has nothing to do with Mount Vernon City Schools. So when we found out that the student was not in school, that law enforcement was involved, why do we have to share all of that information with Mount Vernon City School parents about a Centerburg student? We didn't see the need to cause them to panic over something that was not even an issue at that point. So this idea of transparency that we're not willing to share, we'll share the stuff I believe we need to know and hear. I don't think that we needed to hear about that on the last day of school before the break when it didn't involve us. So um, I just wanted to make sure I could set that record straight as well. Um, we have been meeting, uh, and I appreciate our teachers and our classified staff and their due diligence relative to COVID. Uh, obviously, we were hoping we would be turning the corner. And with the holiday break, we were well aware that it could get interesting when we return from break. Uh, we have been working on contingency plans as need be, but I want the board to know and our community to know that our primary educational goal is to keep all of our students at school. I mean, our primary educational goal is to keep all of our students at school. Um, and so there's some factors to consider there. And I think those are worth mentioning. Teacher absences are really important. And if teacher absences rise to a level that makes the operation of the school um, quite challenging, um, then we need to be aware of what those are. We met as an administrative team um, last week and we went building by building and said, okay, we need to have all hands on deck. And so we're going to use everyone from our title teachers to our academic tutors, to our special education teachers, our social workers, our specialists, so that we can keep kids in school. How many teachers absence would it would, would need to be there for us to maybe change course. And we, we sat down and identified those things. And that was really, really important for us to do. We also have some plans in school that we can emergency subdivide classrooms if possible. At the middle school and high school, we can do study halls, we can use planning periods. Um, all that to say, we have been doing everything that we can to try to mitigate potential absences as we go through. Uh, we're also looking to bring back for the month of January pandemic subs to make sure we have additional subs in each building so we can handle whatever may come our way. Um, transportation, we met with the transportation department. Uh, what you're hearing, uh, quite frankly, in the Columbus area is they're struggling with transportation. And so when bus drivers uh, find themselves uh, having to stay home due to COVID, um, you just can't pick some up off the street to drive a bus. And so we sat down with that group and determined that we could we could absorb up to five uh, individuals um, if they would happen to not be able to work uh, due to COVID or other things. And so we've got some alternatives in place if we went that direction, needed to go in that direction. Uh, food service, we've talked about the same kinds of things there. You know, when it gets to students, um, factors to consider students, of course, uh, we're monitoring those absences as we go. Um, we take careful consideration of uh, absences at the building level, at grade levels, and across the district. Um, we're not going to try to tie some sort of a metric to that at this point. Um, we've been uh, given some new guidelines. Uh, those are the third factors to consider there. Um, positive cases, as you may, and I know the board is aware because we communicate with you, um, that the CDC has went from 10 days to five days for a positive case, uh, again, versus 10, providing that when those students or staff members would return, they would return with a mask for the continuance of, of that 10 day period. Um, close contacts, we advocated for some things way back in August that have been uh, working for the district for several months now, those continue to go. It's called the mask to stay policy. Again, if a student or a staff member is deemed a close contact to a positive case, they can remain in school, uh, provided they do symptom checks daily and they uh, wear a mask for 10 days. So we're, we're trying everything we can to make sure we can mitigate uh, these things and keep our students in school. 
Just to give you an idea, this has been updated since this afternoon. Um, Friday's count, when I left on Friday, we had 56 students in the isolation category and seven staff members and the high school and the middle school had 41 students combined. I must have missed the S and the H and the M. As of after school today, on Monday, we have 32 students currently in active isolation, uh, 12 staff members, and we continue to update that uh, on a regular basis. Again, I think one of the benefits is our ability to keep kids in school. The five days can move pretty quickly. 10 days certainly takes a longer period of time. Just to give you an idea of our cumulative numbers, um, last year, our yearly totals, we had 354 students who had contacted COVID last year. Now, again, that was a, a different variant, new variant this year, and 58 staff members. Um, as of today, from August 19th to January 10th, we've had 340 students um, contract the, uh, the new variants and 54 staff members. Thankfully, we've been able, most uh, everyone has been able to work through those uh, difficult challenges along the way. So I wanna bring that to your attention. And finally, um, uh, you're going to be approving our district calendar tonight. And uh, just a few quick highlights there as we work with both of our unions to do this. The teacher start date will be August 15th with students starting August 18th. Parent teacher conferences, we've moved them from November into October really tying it to the week after the first nine weeks. Our Thanksgiving break has uh, changed just a little bit. It used to be where we would uh, just go Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. We have followed that up with the following Monday, and that will really align us with the Career Center and our surrounding districts. Um, you look at the winter break, um, it is a full two week winter break, and January 2nd um, is a Monday, so we'll not come back the day after New Year's. Spring break is April 3rd through the 10th. Uh, we have added that day after Easter um, for uh, folks who are doing a lot of traveling. And of course, Good Friday is during that time as well. Graduation is Sunday, May 28th. Students' last day is May 31st. And teachers' last day is June 1st. Uh, probably the first time this has happened in a long time. The semesters have perfectly aligned with 87 student days in both sections. So I just wanted to provide that little bit of a district update uh, there. And um, this next part of our agenda, I'm kind of excited to share this with you. Um, we shared a little bit in some correspondence I have with you about giving hope to charity. And uh, I have a couple of folks here who might want to share, but I'm gonna let the video do the talking if that's okay, or do you want to say something right now? Let the video speak for stuff. Okay. I think it was because of COVID. I think it was a long time ago last year. And I made a uh, suggestion that we take our candy and Go to fun, money, and we we'll do something other than you know, spend it on ourselves. We'll spend it on some kids in need. And then, uh, I had been to a shop for a cop event with my granddaughter, and she loved it. And I thought, well, why not do a shop for the bus driver? And so we put together, um, we just put together a small group of people that are hard for good to get. We took the money we had, which was right about $1,200. We had another 13 to it, another $100 to it, and another donations. And we decided to put this program together where we took, we went to the schools, the elementary schools, and we had six kids. And those six kids, the elementary schools picked them for us. And um, so we developed a shopping day for them. And the, the big surprise of that day, we had $200 to give each kid. And instead of the kids taking that $200, because they didn't have much of anything, they could have spent that on themselves. They were filling their cards full of uh, gifts for mom, dad, or siblings. And from that point, we knew we had to do it again. 
So we went out this year, we created a charity. We decided that we would put our hearts and soul into that charity so that we could do it again and maybe get six more kids this year to do it. And then we got the six, what, enough money for six? And then enough money for 12? And then enough money for 19? And then we added 20? And we added the high school and the middle school? And, you know, just a love for the kids, really. We see so much need in our city schools, and anybody can step up and fill that need. Anybody can come forward and do a good deed, and that's what we want to do. And we don't want anything left behind because they can't afford to go to camp, they can't get rides to a place. We, we want to be a charity that supports Mount Vernon City School But we are not fully formed yet. We still are working on our ideas. How do we become useful in Mount Vernon City Schools? Um, but I think we may be because we have some great people with some big hearts and big hearts.
they are not even thinking about their, themselves. They want to help others. Oh, if they just smoke, it, it makes it all right. They, they just want to help. It, it's just Christmas spirit. But they love it. Not, 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 not. So I know I've shown a lot of videos tonight and don't tend to do that every board meeting, but I thought that was one that was really well done. And Dave and Doug are, are both here tonight and um, uh, they really kind of started this thing. And it's a tribute to, to Mike's group and the classified group transportation. Uh, this was really something that uh, appealed to them. I think they have desires to grow in different directions to serve students. And so, you know, they're more than just bus drivers. Uh, they care about their kids. I don't know if you have anything you want to add to any of that or not. I don't know how much you uh, talked to the board about this year. We got something really special. We got enough money to add high school, middle school to this mix, but it was a very, you know, it was very elementary type of, you know, Christmas, holiday, bloody deal. So how do we get the high school, middle school involved, the older kids, to buy into this? So we work with the, we work with the uh, principals and the counselors. And what we wanted to do was to bring in high school, middle school students that, you know, were in need financially, were in need, you know, might, might not even be financially, it could just be a hardship for the family. And uh, we, were, we told them that we needed them to help, to be elves this year. And just to come on board and shop with us and, and be with the kids, help them pick out toys. And so they, the high school and middle school didn't know they were getting anything. And when we came in and they shopped for a while and they were all involved, they, I told them when they came in the door, I said, make these, this, these little kids feel special. And they did that. These, these high school, middle school kids weren't expecting a dime. And uh, we tapped them on the shoulder about halfway through and we said, we're, we're shopping for you too. And uh, the, the, the look on their faces and, and the story we gained from that uh, were amazing. And if it wasn't for the principals and the counselors uh, who worked well with us and picked the right kids, Bill Cedar's support in this whole program, I mean, it's amazing. We, we all walked away with different stories from each of the kids, and, and it's hopefully this thing will just grow for us. It's great. And I want to thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. I think we should give them a hand. Okay, okay we'll move through the more uh, politically part of the agenda. We have one item for board approval tonight in, in sections uh, the 2022-2023 district calendar. Thank you. I would entertain a motion to approve that item. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Rigoldi. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Mrs. Gaston. Were there any comments or questions about the new calendar? I just uh, want to express my appreciation um, to Mr. Cedar and to both uh, unions for their hard work and diligence putting the calendar together because I know there was some back and forth and I think we have a beautiful calendar for our student and staff next year. So thank you for your hard work on that. I like all the breaks. I yeah, absolutely. That, yeah, perfectly right timed. Everyone. Yes. <laughs> and there, the calendar is lined. I was looking at uh, county calendars today as well, and they're very, uh, they're aligned. So that's nice when the schools are all on the same schedule. That helps a lot. So thank you for all of that. Thank you. <laughs> hey, would you call the roll, please? <clears throat> Ms. Regola Dye. Yes. Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Mr. Workman. Mr. Ward? Yes. Dr. Bennett? Yes, motion carry. Thank you. Um, for student achievement liaison report, I would just like to focus on the um, K, the five K-12 um, educational technology trends to watch in 2022. And I'd like to point out that um, in 2021, districts with more than a thousand students access an average of 1,449 EdTech products online each month of the school year. And that's according to research um, data by Learn Platform. And they're now seeing an increase in teachers and students burned out on technology. 
So they're saying that um, educators and IT K-12 administrators need to integrate technology in ways that are meaningful and intentional and then make their lives easier. Um, technology is with us, it's here to stay, but we need to use it wisely. Um, the five ways are, the first one is artificial intelligence and machine learning, which are data-driven and rely on inputs by the educator who understands the out, what the output should be. And currently, Mount Vernon City Schools is um, not using AI or uh, ML, but AI, artificial intelligence, is embedded in some new learning and intervention programs. The second is cloud technology. And <clears throat> through uh, Google Classroom Suite, um, Mount Vernon City Schools is using um, cloud technology. All files and file sharing are done in the cloud. Also, we have a variety of programs that are cloud-based uh, with direct connections through a portal on the internet. And cloud learning really um, was a uh, benefit to schools when they had all of the online remote work and their network infrastructures wouldn't have handled it otherwise. So it did benefit many schools during the pandemic and remote learning. Uh, the third is cybersecurity that helps schools defend against growing security threats. And Mount Vernon City Schools participates in LACA, which is the Licking Area Computer Association. And Mount Vernon is one of 19 school districts and they um, manage our cybersecurity for us. The fourth is asynchronous learning, which gives students more freedom to learn at their own, in their own time. And um, for those of you who aren't familiar with synchronous and asynchronous, uh, synchronous learning just means learning in time um, when you're participating in a class live. And asynchronous is when uh, the learning is recorded and students can just access it, access it at, in their own time. Um, Mount Vernon City Schools, many teachers are still continuing to use through video and Google Classroom asynchronous. And um, I think how helpful it is for students when they can go back and review a lesson or even see it ahead of time. Um, so I think that is really helpful. Um, and the fifth is eSports program in K through 12. And we know that competitions are expanding, expanding globally. Um, currently, Mount Vernon City Schools doesn't have an eSports program. Um, so we'll see what the future holds. So. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Bennett. I'm still trying to figure out how eSports is a sport. Um, I think it's fun. Uh, unless I guess the, the fingers constitute that some physical activity, but uh, it is becoming quite popular. The article, excuse me, the article did point out, though, that um, bringing it into the schools would also help students prepare for careers in those areas because there are lots of options um, career-wise. <laughs> exactly what I was going to mention because on the news uh, earlier today, um, there was, there's a Ohio-based company that uses uh, welding uh, robots, but because of the um, intricate workings of those robots, they are hiring students who are really proficient in technology. And they, he started out with 20 employees and now he has 200. Wow. So even though we are moving towards technology, there are still gonna be many jobs out there for our children to grow into that we have no idea what it's going to be like. And I would say that uh, robotics, uh, we do have and uh, quite a program. We've shared with the board some of our robotics things in the past, uh, drone technology, some of those things we are currently doing in schools um, and programming as well that I think certainly are, are career-based. And so I have one item for board approval tonight in this section. It's the Washington DC class trip. Um, we've been two years where that's been canceled. There certainly is hope uh, that the eighth graders will be able to take that Washington DC class trip. Um, I've included the cancellation policy there for you. There is a date in April, and um, uh, we'll have to really kind of get a sense for where things are as we get closer to that date in April. Uh, there may be a, a little loss uh, of funds that are put forth for that. Uh, right now, the trip costs uh, every student about $515. Uh, 
Uh, there are some scholarships available. They are not really fundraising for this event. Um, the Aerial Foundation and Aerial Corporation have always been kind contributors uh, to this particular trip, which brings the trip, which is originally, you know, in that upper $600 down to $500. So we're thankful for them as well. Uh, so we're asking for your approval tonight uh, to continue to move forward on the trip. And then as we get close to April, we'll make some final decisions. Thank you. I would entertain a motion to approve the Washington, D.C. class trip. So I'll move. Thank you, Mr. Gulladai. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mr. Workman. Were there any questions? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Goladai. Yes. Mr. Workman. Yes. Mr. Ward. Yes. Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Dr. Ritter. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Fiscal services. No, I need it. No, I'm good. This is uh, the last time that I will be telling you that this is very, very boilerplate because we've already received our first payment in January from the state, which has changed drastically as they were trying to catch up with the legislation that was passed. They finally did so, and we've started to see that in our first January payment, but that is not represented here since this is the close of the month of December. As I've been telling the board for months now, I've been literally changing pennies at the end of some of these amounts because the state is sending us basically had been sending us the same amount month after month after month while they were working on the other end to uh, get caught up with the legislation that passed in the biennial budget. So again, this is very boilerplate, not much change, but pennies on the ends of some of these numbers. Um, you can scroll down just a little bit there, Mr. Sheeter. Keep going into the investments. Obviously, we're not earning nearly what we were earning um, in previous years, but we still have some money out that we are investing. And unless the board has any questions on this, I can move on to the amend appropriation amendment. Obviously, as a board, you know, anytime we're going to spend money, you have to approve it. Um, at the beginning of the year, I sort of make estimates based off of previous years of, regarding how much we're going to spend in each category. Sometimes I can get shocked in those, especially in the federal realm, because sometimes they send a lot more money than they have in the past. This one was just purely me forgetting how uh, different the past two years had been and underestimating what we would be spending in athletics. So appropriating some additional funds in athletics and asking for the board approval. You'll see every time you approve when I leave it on there, I hope that's helpful. I could take those off and just focus on the one but it allows us to kind of go back and look at the history. Sometimes we get a grant that we didn't know, so we have to change an appropriation early in the fiscal year. But now that we're into January, we start to have changes to appropriation somewhat fairly regularly because they're all based on estimates. Do you have a memorial book to read? And I'll do that. And then if the board has any questions, I'll try to answer them at that time. So we have a book in memory of Mark Crawford, the brother of Deb Ornalis, who is our district vision spe specialist. The title of that book is History Smashers Pearl Harbor, and it was donated to the Twin Oak Elementary Library. Okay, I would entertain a motion to approve those fiscal services items as read. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Uruladai. Is there a second? I'll second that. <laughs> Thank you, Mrs. Gatsman. Were there any questions? Would you call the roll, please? Ms. Rogola Dye? Yes. Mrs. Gatsman? Yes. Mr. Workman? Yes. Mr. Ward? Yes. Dr. Bennett? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And Ms. Rogola Dye? Thank you. Um, just as a brief review, in uh, 2019, 199 bills were introduced, and four that had been introduced in that year were passed. Uh, focusing on a few additional bills that have been introduced, HB 615 introduced in 2020 would authorize the installation of barriers on school buses with the rules uh, on those barriers directed by the Pub Director of Public Safety. HB 185 is in regard to the eligibility for publicly funded childcare SB 218 would prohibit public schools from beginning the school day earlier than 8.30 a.m. And 
Uh, just for your information, I contacted our representative Rick Carfagna, urging him and his colleagues to vote no on HB 126 as amended by the Senate. OSBA asked us to contact our representatives because HB 126 would alter the system by which school boards can challenge property evaluations. For example, school districts would be prohibited from filing an initial complaint and would be prohibited from appealing a board of revision decision. A board of revision can be made up of a county treasurer, auditor, or a member of the county commission. I also contacted Representative Brett Hiller concerning uh, Education Transparency Act, which I feel is redundant since the standards uh, are readily available for all Ohioans to view on the Ohio uh, board website, State of Education. And the Education and Transparency Act would require teachers to post all standards related to the subjects they teach. And this is just another burden on the time constraints our teachers uh, face every day. So that's my report right now. Does anybody have any questions or comments or? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I have uh, one section for approval. Uh, here in this section, seven facility use requests. Uh, item A and B go together. It's the Good News Club. We're at Good News Clubs at East Elementary and the Middle School. Uh, item C and D are use of the public libraries uh, for Battle of the Books. Uh, item E is for Cub Scouts, Little Stingers, and Thrive Kid Fitness. Those facility use requests for your approval tonight. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Cedar. And I would um, appreciate a motion for the facility use request. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Regula Dye. Were there any questions? <clears throat> Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Ward? Yes. Ms. Regola Dye? Yes. Mr. Workman? Yes. Mrs. Getzman? Yes. Dr. Bennett? Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. And student services? Under the student services section, no item for information. Oh, just that. Go ahead. You can read it. <laughs> All right. I have just one item tonight, and that's the memo of understanding. Um, some of you may have recalled that we have had the foster grandparent program before. Right now, we just have one grandparent who is working at Wigan Street, but this um, memo of understanding is between us and the agency that supplies those. There's no cost to the district. They do all of the legwork in finding those individuals that want to help us, and then we just figure out what students they would work with in the buildings. So this is just an MOU that we'd like your approval from. I would entertain a motion to approve that item as read. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Lula Dye. I'll Mr. second. Workman. Mr. Workman will second. Were there any questions? Would you call the roll, please? Ms. Regola Dye. Yes. Mr. Workman. Yes. Mr. Ward. Yes. Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Dr. Bennett. Yes. Motion carried. Personnel. Under personnel uh, and certificated license have. Uh, just one item for information, the salary change notice for two employees. Item B is the number of items recommended for board approval tonight. Uh, in the employment section, you're looking at some one-year contracts, uh, some additional volunteers, uh, substitute teachers as we continue to uh, work towards improving that whole. And you're seeing uh, supplemental contracts for spring, uh, extracurricular as well. Um, those items for your approval tonight. Thank you. I would entertain a motion for those certificated staff license. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Ward. And do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Mrs. Getzman. Were there any questions? Would you call the roll, please? Mr. Ward. Yes. Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Mr. Workman. Yes. Ms. Regola Dye. Yes. Dr. Bennett. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Classified staff. <clears throat> Classified staff. No items for information tonight. Uh, just a number of items for board approval, a couple two-year contracts, and uh, some additional substitute employment for the classified sub pool. And we have one resignation tonight for your approval. I have a motion for those personnel items. So moved. Thank you, Mr. Workman. Do I have a second? Second. 
Thank you, Ms. Rugolodai. Were there any questions? Hearing none, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Workman? Yes. Ms. Rugolodai? Yes. Mr. Ward? Yes. Mrs. Getzman? Yes. Dr. Bennett? Yes, motion carried. Thank you. Um, at this time, we have an opportunity for board member comments. Um, and Mrs. Getzman, would you like to lead? Um, again, I would just like to say thank you um, to the bus drivers um, for your event that you put together. Just top notch and just shows the input um, and the impact that you have in our community and with our students. So thank you very much for that. Heartwarming. Um, and to um, Jeremiah Armstrong, our RSO, with our new little puppy on board, our little Bernadoodle, if I'm correct. Is that right? Bernadoodle, I think is how you pronounce it. So um, exciting. I'll be excited to see who gets the honor of naming the puppy. Um, but I think that's a great emotional support for our students when they can um, wrap their arms and, and express their love unconditionally to something. So great things going on. Thank you. Ms. Ugolodon. Thank you. Thank you to everyone coming tonight and for those at home who are watching. Again, a thank you, a deep gratitude that we have toward our staff. And when we were watching the video about the giving charity, it came to mind that we educate the whole child. And that education comes from our bus drivers, our custodians, our food personnel, our teachers, our secretaries, our nurses, the principals, our superintendent. We are all involved in educating the whole child, whatever that might be, that will get them uh, some success and a feeling of accomplishment. And uh, I continue to be amazed at uh, what we do. Uh, I've spent 35 years in the classroom, and today I, I have all the admiration in the world for our educators. So thank you for everything you do and for truly being part of this community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ward. Well, this is my first board meeting, and so uh, we get to share this moment together. So thank you all for coming out this evening. Uh, I consider it, um, you know, quite an honor and a privilege to, you know, serve the community and serve this school district. And um, I appreciate the voter support and entrusting uh, that responsibility to me. And I just thank you all for uh, being here and allowing me to be a part of this. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad to have you too. <laughs> it, it's always tough going last. There's, a, there's been so many good things that I don't want to be redundant, but just again, wanted to thank everyone for coming. Um, Happy New Year. Um, a lot of really great things are happening. You guys are doing a great job with that. That was, that was really neat to see. I'd um, like to welcome Jeff. Looking forward to working with him. And uh, again, just uh, my sincere appreciation. Thank you. I guess I would like to um, just reiterate what everyone else has said. Um, I enjoyed the article about the puppy too. <laughs> and um, seeing the, the video, I watched it at home and it's, it's hard not to cry. I mean, it just really brings tears to your eyes. It's very heartwarming. So thank you for giving um, our bus drivers that opportunity because we know when you give like that, it really blesses your heart. So, and we're teaching our kids to be giving too. So thank you for being a, such a great example for our community. Um, and at this time, I think we have um, a request for executive session um, for the purpose of um, employment. Is that correct? Okay, I would entertain a motion then to go into executive session. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Rudolph. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Mrs. Getzman. And if you'll call the roll. Mr. Goladai. Yes. Mrs. Getzman. Yes. Mr. Workman. Yes. Mr. Ward. Yes. Dr. Bennett. Yes. Motion carried. The board will be in executive session. Did you want to add any last minute? Anything? No, I will. Uh, we'll bring back the board at this moment time by the conversation about uh, Jeremiah, our SRO, and his therapy dog. 
Um, we had a unique kind of a ceremony at the middle school. I know on our district website, you can read about this information, but um, the cost of the dog and all the maintenance and upkeep that was all donated and worked collaboratively with Mount Vernon Police Department. And um, there's some really exciting research about that. And uh, um, so we're excited to share that with you in the future. Great, thank you. Okay, we are in executive session.